Joining us now on the line is our friend Bill Crystal from the Weekly Standard. Good morning to you, Bill. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing very well. Let me start with something that was on uh, ABC this weekend with Representative Tulsi Gabbard, interviewed by Martha Raddatz. Now, Tulsi Gabbard uh, is a member of Congress. She is a um, a Democratic lawmaker from the state of Hawaii, one of the first combat uh, veterans in the Congress, uh, to question her strategy in Iraq. Listen to what she told Martha Raddatz. White House officials last week. They said, and I quote, these airstrikes are not an authorization of a broad-based counterterrorism campaign against ISIS, end of quote. So if our mission is not to take out the Islamic extremists who continue to threaten and wage war against us, uh, then I think we've got a real problem here. If we, if we focus on that mission, which I think we should, then we can look at what are the tactics that we need to take them out. She sort of makes a good point, it seems to me, Bill Crystal. I mean, this is a Democratic member of Congress uh, questioning whether or not we have the right strategy when it comes to containing or taking care of ISIS. I think she makes an excellent point. And I was so struck myself when President Obama announced the original uh, airstrikes and humanitarian uh, relief that he limited the mission to basically humanitarian relief and uh, preventing ISIS from conquering Kurdistan seem to accept the notion that there would be this ISIS um, caliphate smack in the middle of Iraq, extending into Syria, dominating millions of people, uh, being used as a trading ground for God knows what, and, and as a source of future uh, aggression and, and terror. So I, I think she's right. I mean, strategically, we need to not just limit and contain, but destroy ISIS, certainly at least put them on the defensive and put them on the run. And they're not on the run, and I'm glad we did the airstrikes we've done, and I'm glad we were able to help some of the uh, Yazidis up on the mountain, but that's by no means enough. It's a strategic threat to the U.S. And it should be pointed out that this criticism coming from Representative Tulsi Gabbard, it's significant because she's a Democrat, but also significant because she's an Iraq War vet. She signed up for the original mission against Islamic terror in Iraq under George Bush. She is, uh, in, in, through that spectrum of a woman who was ready to fight on behalf of that mission, she is now saying this mission is lost under Obama. Or at least so far the mission is, uh, is so limited as to be uh, unnecessary, but I think it's part of a broader problem of President Obama's foreign policy, which is he doesn't seem to have a strategic view of the Middle East. It's a matter of uh, humanitarian aid here, a red line there, which we don't unfortunately follow through. <laughs> uh, even even tactically, we're not doing a good job, but there's no sense strategically that we need to dominate there. We need to make terrorism a losing proposition. We need to make jihadism a losing proposition. We need to stand with our friends and strengthen them and weaken our enemies. Any sense of, you know, what can quarrel about exactly what the right strategy is and exactly what the implications of the right strategy are, that's what foreign policy debates are about. But what's striking about the Obama administration, you do hear this from Democrats. I had dinner last night, and that happens with a couple of uh, Democratic friends, and, and they are as, are, as, uh, are as quick as any Republican to say, it just seems to be a total lack of strategy there. Well, uh, what is your sense about what the president is doing back in town? I mean, he's been out at Martha's Vineyard. Uh, he flew in late last night and is supposed to be here for some meetings today. But the administration has not been very clear in trying to explain what it is that the president is doing. It has something to do with getting an update on the situation in Iraq, perhaps getting an update on the situation in Ferguson. What is your sense about this return? I think the most likely explanation is, you know, they scheduled it even before the altercation, and it was just to break up the vacation, make it uh, immunize him a little from the charge that he's just checked out for two weeks, and, and genuinely let him catch up on a couple of these issues in a way that it's a little hard to do when you're away, even though, of course, the president's always the president, and he has access to everyone and so forth. I've, I work for the vice president. I know what that's like, and it's still better, you know, it's still, different, still better to be in the White House and meet with your advisors. And, keep things around. So maybe it is genuinely just to catch up on issues, and it happens that the leading issues of the day are Ferguson and Iraq and other things, and he's catching up on those. There are all these theories that he's, you know, here because there's going to be a Supreme Court vacancy, and he's either interviewing candidates or is going to announce, so someone's going to announce a resignation today or tomorrow. That would be dramatic, I suppose. Uh, there are theories that he was going to announce the uh, unilateral presidential amnesty that he's been talking about for millions of illegal of immigrants illegally here in the country. Uh, that seems to have receded in terms of the, the, the speculation, but I suppose he could pull that, uh, that uh, out of his hat or whatever you pull that out of. Uh, he uses pen and phone to make law in that area, too. So 
I guess we'll see over the next two days. Our guest is Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard. And uh, Bill, listen, you're talking about Iraq and America's foreign policy there and what our vital interest is. But, you know, here in Washington, everything is viewed through the prism of politics. And we saw the spectacle this last week of Hillary Clinton really uh, using some strong language to try to separate herself from Obama, not just on this, but on foreign policy in general. The defense secretary, Chuck Hagel, even said the world is exploding all over. Is, is Hillary Clinton going to be running against Barack Obama in 2016? Can she really separate herself from a foreign policy that she helped craft? Well, we'll see. I think she'll want to say that in the first term uh, she helped to keep things on track. She and Gates and Petraeus and Panetta, they were the grown-ups there surrounding President Obama. But unfortunately, in the second term, it's gone off the rails some. And I think she's smart enough to know you can't deny reality. It's obviously a failing foreign policy, unfortunately, for the country. Uh, she very much wa- wants to run as Hillary Clinton in 2016, not as Barack Obama's successor. And it's hard when you're from the same party and worked in the same administration. Uh, it's going to be hard for her to avoid Republicans saying legitimately, hey, this is just a third term for Obama. If you like the Obama foreign policy, if you like Obamacare, elect Hillary. If you want to change, elect Republicans. I think that's a good message for Republicans. She wants to try to neutralize that message to some degree. I think she genuinely doesn't agree entirely with Obama's foreign policy. So she's acted early, I think intelligently from her point of view. You know, why not do it now? Begin to lay the groundwork now. Get into voters' minds the sense that if they're voting, for, if you vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016, you're not voting for more of the same in the Middle East. I think uh, the comments you reported earlier from the Democratic Congresswoman from Hawaii. I mean, that's the kind of thing where probably Hillary Clinton statements emboldened her, and vice versa. And you could imagine, and I think it'd be good for the country, honestly. You could imagine a bunch of Democrats starting to separate themselves from President Obama's foreign policy over the next weeks and months. You know, you mentioned something in passing. I want to I want to come back to it, and that was that maybe there's a, a Supreme Court announcement uh, that is pending. What, g- g- give me what you think you, we know about this situation and why it makes sense for there to be an announcement like that about now. Well, I mean, left-wing activists have been saying and really uh, saying pretty vociferously that elderly liberal justices, like Justice Ginsburg in particular, uh, might want to think about resigning because they want to give President Obama an appointment here if they hang on for a couple of years and then resign, maybe with a Republican a president in 2017, or even after Republicans take the Senate, assuming they do in 2015, uh, that there's less of a chance of an automatic uh, of a liberal appoint the nominee or, or of a liberal nominee if, if it's Obama still president being confirmed by a Republican Senate. So I don't know that Justice Ginsburg is listening to all these people telling her to resign, or Justice Breyer. Um, I have no knowledge about anyone's, you know, health or anything like that, so it's pure speculation. But, um, you know, that's what I think some of the left would love to see President Obama stand up in the Rose Garden today and say, you know what, I've got a Supreme Court appointment today. And then dare Republicans, I guess, to hold that up for two years. And uh, at least from their point of view, assuming it's a liberal justice who would be retiring, at least get a younger liberal on the bench. I mean, one of the issues of 2016 that people haven't talked about much is the Supreme Court. It's going to be in play, yep. so to speak. I think the next president will shape the future of the Supreme Court. That will be a big issue in 2016. But but if he were to make if a decision were to be made now, if there were a resignation need to be filled, the president would have a better chance of getting a more liberal nominee through while the Democrats are in control of the Senate. Yes, I mean, if they can insist on a vote by November or in the lame duck session, which uh, Reed might really try to force through, I suppose. All right. Bill Crystal, a great pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. And have a nice rest of the summer. We it's will. Coming to a very, it's coming to a very quick end, I'm afraid. Yeah, yes, it is. It is.